What's up everybody, Julian Ferrer here back with another video on the Photosphere channel. Thanks for tuning in. Guys, I had a couple of questions uh, from my last video, so I figured I'd make a short video today. It's not going to be a long one, but it's going to be quite, quite important for anybody who's a lighting photographer. Somebody asked me how I know how close and far to put my flash. So it's a good question. Basically, light fall off is a very important aspect of uh, photography, especially with flash photography. So what I'm going to do is demonstrate using a square 24 by 24 inch softbox lighting up over you can see our mannequin head at the back over there crystal we're going to start off at around a certain distance very close to the model then we're going to back the flash up then we're going to back the flash up again and we're going to show you the difference some good espresso we're going to show you guys the difference in how fast the light falls off and what happens to the shadows the closer or further you bring the light so we're going to start off with the flash very close to the subject's head. I would probably say, looking at this, if you look at the photograph on the screen, it's probably about a little under a foot away from the model's head. It's actually so close that it's going to be in my frame. So this is only for demonstrational purposes. I'm not, I'm not obviously implying that you put a flash uh, that obviously that close to somebody's head unless you're going to do a video or you guys are creating some sort of artistic flair, whatever the case may be. But I'm going to show you exactly what happens. So we're going to go ahead and take the shot. The flash is placed as usual, if you follow my videos, overhead, slightly, feathered off, 45 degrees. We're using one light. We're not focusing on any fill. We're not focusing on lifting shadows. This serves as, as a demonstrational video, okay? So uh, we're going to go ahead and set up the flash. Flash is set up. We're shooting with a Canon 5D Mark IV, 100 millimeter macro. Uh, my flashes are set. I'm using actually a dual setup. It gives me 400 watts, but you can do this with a speed light. There's no problem. My flashes are set up at 1 1 28th per second power, which is uh, two notches off the lowest power setting that my flashes go because I'm very close to the model's head. Like I'm going to repeat, this is not about how to use flash or what the values of the numbers mean. When I do my workshops in the summer, once all this blows over, you're going to fully appreciate and understand how flash works, what the numbers mean, and how you sort of dial everything in. For the meantime, just get these facts down pat and you'll be better off. So 1128, two flashes, we're about a little bit under a foot away. We're shooting at around f3.5, 1 200th of a second, and my Kelvin white balance, my white balance temperature is set around 4700 Kelvin. Um, and the stabilization on my, obviously on my macro lens is off because I'm on a tripod. So we're going to go ahead and take the shot. Um, I usually tell people to close the lights before you shoot a video. So you don't have any cross contamination. Even if the flash kills out most of your ambient light anyway, I still suggest closing the lights, but for this video, I won't because I'm filming on a tripod. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and take the shot. F 3.5 ISO is at 50 low. Okay, so we take the shot. Go ahead and look on the screen. Now, if you look on the screen, guys, it's quite clear. What you're going to see is because we're so close to the model, the shadow fall off is extremely rapid. If you look at the model, uh, looking directly at her from right to left, you see how fast the light falls off from right to left. But if you also notice when you look at the shadows coming off her nose, the triangle of the Rembrandt lighting, everything is very, very smooth. That's because the light source is incredibly, incredibly close to her face. So it appears massive in comparison. And then if you, as you go to the left side, it falls off into blackness. So it's kind of hard to grasp. Once you grasp that concept that the bigger your light source is and the closer you place it to your subject, the faster the light will fall off. Okay. So that's the first shot. Let's go ahead and move the softbox now three feet back. So it'll be a total of three feet from the mannequin head and see what happens. So we move the try the um, the softbox about three feet back okay now we have to compensate with our flash with a, with a couple of things we either close our aperture because we're further the flash has moved further from the subject we need more power so we either change the aperture raise the ISO or raise the flash power Th those are the three parameters that are going to affect the flash exposure because the distance of the flash to subject has changed we are not going to bring our subject closer. We're keeping our subject in the same spot. Okay. And keep in mind, this also works with um, white backdrops. The next video I make, 
will address how to have one white backdrop and use this inverse square law theory to change the color of ba white background from light gray to dark gray to even black, all the while not even changing the color of the backdrop, having a similar white backdrop the entire time. But that's for another video. Let's go ahead and take the shot now and see what happens. So I'm gonna raise my ISO just a little bit to try and compensate. Let me take a quick shot over here. Uh, I'll tell you if everything works out. Okay, so now we are at uh, 160 ISO, F3.5, one two hundredth of a second. Let's go ahead and take the shot. Okay. Now, if you look on the screen already, by backing the flash up, you're going to see something happening. What has happened? Well, the light fall off magically is not as fast as it used to be. The model's face is now more uniformly lit up. We've backed the flash up. We're still only using one light, guys. And just with one light, we're still able to get drama in a shot like this without using any other modifier. It's quite impressive. So we've backed up to three feet now, as you can see in the image. And this is what happens. I'll show you guys the image of the flash and the subject's head. Take a look. It's about at that distance to give you guys a visual. And then here's the image again that we got. So a nice clean fall off. And obviously compared to the first image, the fall off isn't as great. It's not as black which makes sense because we moved the flash further back. So the light now is coming out of the softbox and having more time to expand and distribute along the wavelengths. I don't know if that makes sense. We'll try it again. Now let's take the softbox and move it into this position. Take a look. So we're about six feet back. Let's go all the way back, six feet, give or take. Now we're gonna have to do what? Increase the flash power, increase the ISO, or close down your aperture because the, fat, the flash has moved again further back. We're about six feet from our subject now, so we, lo we lose flash power. And the way the inverse square law works, every time you double the distance of the flash, you're actually losing four times light intensity, not two, four times. So let's go ahead and raise the ISO yet again. I'm raising up the ISO to 320, and let's take a test shot. Okay. All right. So here we go. Now, if you look at the back of the screen, we're at ISO 320, F3.5, 1 200th of a second. What are you starting to see? Well, it's very clear. The model's face, face is now becoming uniform. There's still a little bit of fall off, but if you compare it to the first image that I put on the screen, as such, look at the dramatic difference. It's massive. One image, there's big hot spots and it's falling off, very dramatic. Then it goes to more shape shift, a little bit, a little bit of a less fall off, to almost a, a perfectly bright uniform face. Such a fundamental law that many lighting photographers need to understand. This is gonna shape your lighting. Let me give you an example. You're shooting a wedding. You have a group of people and you have one shoot through, let's say, not even a softbox, one umbrella. There's seven people. What do you do to light up those seven people? You don't bring the umbrella closer. You back the umbrella way, way, way back. Up the power of your ISO and close down your aperture, one or the other. If you're only using a speed light and you don't have enough power, no problem. Close your aperture, raise your ISO. Back that flash up all the way. I guarantee you, you are gonna uniformly lit light everybody. You're not gonna have people falling into shadows. You're not gonna see a transition of light fall off. Everybody's gonna be uniformly lit up. Back that flash up. So that's literally a basic, basic intro into the inverse square law for lighting photography. I hope that video was helpful. I hope you guys learned something. If you had a great time, you enjoyed it, please feel free to subscribe to my channel, send me a comment, any inquiries you might need. Give me ideas for future videos. The more you guys support this channel, the more I can go on and make these instructional videos. And I'm getting a lot of positive feedback. It's really helping people. And honestly, from the bottom of my heart, I'm really happy to hear that. So with that said, have a great day, guys, and keep on shooting.